historic day as we're underway from St. Paul. And the opening draw is dumped in to the Minnesota end. As Rooney is immediately peering over her shoulder and watching play from the near corner. Flipped in behind the net. Flaherty will give chase for Minnesota in the purple sweaters, the sand-colored uniforms for Team Montreal with the maroon trim. What do you expect here early, Alexis? Well, I think Minnesota's going to come out with a lot of fire. Look at this crowd they're playing in front of here today, Clay. I mean, how could you not come out with some fire in your skates today? Of course, beating Boston the other night. But I expect the same out of Montreal. You get the OT winner, and then you come in here today taking on a very good Minnesota team. I expect much of the same from both of these teams. Yeah, Montreal 1-0 beat Ottawa 3-2 in overtime in front of over 8,300 on Tuesday. But this crowd here today, and we don't have an official number yet, is going to blow that out of the water. This is dumped in deep into the Montreal end. Davy Ann, who's aggressive out for her crease, plays the puck, and it's going to slide back down into the Minnesota end as we're just underway here from St. Paul. Greco starts it back for Minnesota. Rink-wide pass intercepted by Davy. Darvin, top of the near circle, centering pass, scoring chance, out in front of the backhand by LaFleur, kicked out of there by Rooney. First grade-A scoring chance for either team, Alexis. Well, it was an ill-advised pass to get things started, and Minnesota getting some help from Rooney on the recovery there, making the save. Battle in behind the Minnesota net. That rink-wide pass, a little out of the reach of Cunning. Cunning had a goal in Boston on Tuesday night in that great win, an historic win for Minnesota, 3-2, despite Minnesota being outshot 35-16. And Ken Klee is hoping for a little more offense here tonight. Despite playing well and getting the win, he wants to see more pucks on them. Battle here at the blue line, and now Montreal steps in offside, not quite. Three minutes into the hockey game. Take a look at this last chance, the turnover, the ill-advised pass coming out of the zone, stolen away nicely by David. Great centering pass there, and way to collect it in off the skates, get the shot in on net. Maddie Rooney tested early, but hey, play. Goaltenders like that. They want to see some shots early, get their feet wet, so they're ready to go the rest of the night. Maddie Rooney, the former Minnesota Duluth great, was so outstanding for Team USA and John Chang. And she's got to have some butterflies today, I would think. I don't know how she does it. I mean, again, playing in front of this crowd in your home state. Your team's already won their first one of the season, looking for their second in a row. So a lot to play for here today. Picked off at center by Montreal's Kennedy Marchman. Played with Connecticut in the PHF. So many great professionals on the rink here today. Back into the Montreal end. He's puck behind Davy N's cage. Slides out to the circle. Now here comes Montreal with some speed and Sarah Bougio starting it ahead. Now to the corner. Shallow angle shot. Rooney is able to stick it away as we're coming up on the three minute mark here, period number one. Home opener for PWHL Minnesota. And the fans are uh, packed in here today. Here's a chance. Channel had it knocked down in front. That might have got one of her own players. I think Toppany staggered a little bit after uh, she was in the way of that blast from Channel, who we didn't even know, Alexis, if she was going to play here today. Now here's Kaba. Michaela Kaba with some speed and some room. Plays it off the board. She'll get to it first. Backhand centering pass. Nobody home for Minnesota. And now Montreal coming back the other way. LaFleur with a drive. And glove by Rooney. And she'll melt it down with 15-24 to go here in the opening period. I liked what Minnesota was trying to do on the other side of the ice. It just kind of caught everybody by surprise, including the Minnesota purple sweaters in the zone as well. And then the chance the other way by Montreal. Let's take a look here at how this one unfolded before taking the shot there from the circle. And Rooney saw that the whole way through. Easy glove save for the Minnesota native. Sarah LaFleur is having a good first period for Montreal. LaFleur, a veteran pro. Played with the Montreal Force prior seasons. And now this is whacked at from neutral ice by Bougio. And Minnesota will have to go back after it. From the point to drive by Catherine Dawu that's knocked down by Minnesota. Dawu again plays it and backhands it in and Montreal will make a line change. And that was great pressure at the point by Heisey to force that puck out of the zone, making everybody start fresh there. Katie Taven plays it along the wall. 
Montreal breaks up. Here's Laura Stacy. She'll cram it in. Stacy, the two-time Canadian Olympian power forward. So fun to watch on that line with Poulin. Poulin, one of the great players in the world. Shot out in front. Vanasova tried to settle it down and get another drive on. There's a blast from Ambrose, and Rooney scrambles to keep it out of the net. Job well done by Rooney on that sequence because that first tip was not an easy one to make a save on. Some of the fans here on their feet after a sequence of saves by Matty Rooney. And let's take another look at it here. The shot comes in from the point. Just a tip drill play here. Looking for the tip out front. Scramble ensues. Puck pops out to the high slot. Matty Rooney makes the second and third save on the sequence. Keeps this a 0-0 game. Minnesota has been getting terrific goaltending here in the early part of the season. It was Nicole Hensley the other night in Beantown. And so far, Matty Rooney keeping this a scoreless hockey game. Here comes Minnesota at center ice. Zumwinkle will play it on the right wing out of the reach of Tapani. As we pass the six-minute mark here of period number one. Home opener for PWHL. Minnesota, the newest sports franchise in the Twin Cities. Steckline it. Her own blue line plays it ahead. Liz Sheppers, who spent last year with the White Caps after a great year at Ohio State, got it in deep. They tried to feed the front. It's picked off by Dempsey, and Montreal gets it to the line, but not out. They tried that low to high pass a few times in the early stages of this first period. It hasn't worked yet. I like what they're trying to do. They just got to finish it now to get a good look on that. Tipped ahead at center. And it's going to drift back in by Davian. Davian, excellent in the opener. Stopped 26 of 28 shots against Ottawa, but hasn't been tested much yet. In fact, no official shots on net. We'll see if that one counts as she sticks it off to the corner. Past the seven-minute mark now, period number one. From center. Emma Greco got it in. Now some room for Kava. Trying to feed the front. Sliding down was Aaron Ambrose. Great defensive play by Ambrose to lay out, intercept that pass there to take away the chance for Minnesota. The Canadian Olympian, you can see why she was the sixth overall pick in the draft. Stretch pass, and that's out of the reach of everybody, namely Stacy, and an icicle. Take a look at that last chance by Minnesota. And great job just to gather this puck up. Michaela Kava trying to pass that to the front of the net, but great defense by Ambrose to lay out. And a fun fact, or maybe not so fun fact, I guess for Minnesota today, the visiting teams are 4-0 all time so far this season. So Minnesota, a chance to make even more history today by winning on home ice if they can do so. We were chatting with the general manager for the game, a, a Minnesota native in her own right. Yeah, she wants to make some history with that as well. A two-on-one for Montreal developing a little slow on that return pass as Stacy sent it across, kept in the zone by Ambrose, low to the ice. Now side of the net, Stacy trying to create. Vanna Silva takes a bump. And it slides off to the far wing corner. Now here's Stacy backhand. Rooney kicks it out. Rebound out in front. Poked at by Boulan. And Minnesota's able to dig it out and bring it back to center. And great work to keep the play in the zone by Montreal after the odd rush didn't go their way. They continue to generate chances, force Rooney to make another save, and force Minnesota to work the puck out of the zone. Backhanded in. Off the stick of Grace Zumwinkle, the former Golden Gopher. But again, it doesn't stay in the attack zone long for Minnesota. They've had a hard time setting up on that end of the ice. Now here's a drive for top of the right on, and DBN sought the entire way. And speaking of chances, we'll take a look at this chance by Montreal just moments ago. The two-on-one odd skater rush. The second pass there, just a little out of reach, but like I said, they continue to generate a chance after this missed play. Poulin gathers it up in the corner. This is Maggie Flaherty, former UMB Bulldog, bringing it back through neutral ice. Lost it, Greco keeps it alive for Minnesota. Slides it along the near boards. Now Catherine Dau, the former UMB Bulldog as well, gets it to the line, but not out for Montreal. Here's Madison Bazal giving chase. She'll play it back behind the net. Montreal gets it to the Minnesota blue line. Chip back. 
to the Montreal end. Bizzol will take a whack at it. Here comes Montreal. This is Gabrielle David, excellent goal scorer at Clarkson in her college playing days. Flaherty couldn't control it. Poked by David. Minnesota will get back on it. But it's Steckline who has to regroup behind her own net. Again, Minnesota can't advance it past the checkered line. Now back the other way. Oh, nice move. Centering pass. Beautiful feed by Marchment, but they couldn't settle it down on the other way. Great defensive play on the back door, breaking up that pass. That would have probably been a backdoor tap in had she not been there. So definitely, as Alexis alluded to, the, the scoring chances heavily favoring Montreal at this point. We're still looking for a grade-A chance for Minnesota. 9.25 to go opening period. Here's Marchman again looking to create. Plays it off for Vanna Silva. Vanna Silva on that top line. And it's intercepted. Minnesota gets it out of the zone. Log on here will quickly wrap it right back in. That's going to be an offside. We're back here now with Coach Corey Chevry for Montreal. And Coach, your team has been pushing the pace early here. What have you liked out of your team to get started here in Minnesota? Yeah, I think it's just important that we're dictating the pace. Um, it was really uh, part of our game plan to play fast. We know that Minnesota is going to come with a lot of speed. Uh, so very happy with what we've accomplished so far. Great. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck the rest Thank of the way. Thank you. Minnesota coming back through center. Knocking it in is Grace Sumwinkle. 109 goals in five seasons at the University of Minnesota. Of course, a U.S. Olympia. She's tied up along the wall. Puck comes free. Going to the high slot. Now here's a chance for Greco a drive right into the breadbasket of Renee Debian. Well, a decent look there by Minnesota. They struggled to generate chances in this first period. But a great pass here on the backhand by Greco. A no-look pass. All right, thank you for having Greco on the shot. Panic on the pass, and Greco fires that one in, forcing Davian to make a save. Kelly Panic, 28-year-old free agent signee, one of the three pre-draft signees, along with Kendall Coyne Schofield and Lee Steckline. And along with the number one overall pick in the draft, Taylor Heisey. Alexis, those players right there, they are the foundation of this Minnesota franchise. We're going to be talking more about the personnel decisions with general manager Natalie Darwitz between periods. It's just wild to think that before the draft even happened, Minnesota was already set with such a good foundation this season. They continued to build on that, of course, picking up Heisey and all the other pieces they added in. And it's going to be fun to watch this team throughout the season. Picked up here at center ice by Claire Dalton, was the Yale captain last year. Taken back by Minnesota. Now with some room to operate here at center, it's Steckline, feeds it ahead for Kava. Kava, backhand, return pass for Steckline, just out of her reach. I like what they were trying to do there. The crowd is just anxious for a goal. Minnesota trying to give them one, but no luck on that sequence. Now Minnesota will have to regroup back in their own end. Over seven minutes to go in the opening period. Nearly a turnover there. It off the body of David. But she couldn't knock it down to her stick. Flip back here by DeGeorge. And out of the reach of Brooke Bryant, the Linden, California native who played at Minnesota State. So she has to chase after. Loose puck picked up by Montreal. Here they come. Poulin tries to center for Stacy. It's knocked down. And a good defensive back check there by Minnesota. Here comes Stacy again. From the half wall, we'll hand off. Poulin back for Stacy. Playing a two person game there. And now Bazal gets involved. Now here's Stacy again with her head up, looking to shoot. Rebound comes out. Rooney scrambling, can't find it. And it drifts wide of the net. Here's another drive. That might have hit a body in front. Boy, Montreal just buzzing out in front of the Minnesota net. And so much of this has happened because of turnovers by Team Minnesota. They have not forced the pass as well today. It's causing the Montreal team to get the puck on too many opportunities in the offensive zone, forcing Manny Rooney to work really hard here in the early stages of the first period. 
top line out there for Minnesota, but now they're going to head to the bench as Minnesota makes a change. Still having a hard time generating offense here on this historic day in St. Paul. Picked up at the Montreal Blue Line. Now turned back over. Top and E will get it to the Montreal line. Punched right back. There's a pass from Lum out of the reach of Marchman. Back here at center ice, it's Toppenny. Toppenny hands off on the near wing. Zumwinkle tried to get it over for Steckline. Instead turns it over. 5.20 to go, first period. Still no score. Spinning their panic, keeping that alive for Minnesota. Now Toppenny with some room. Susanna Toppenny, the Finnish Olympian for Steckline. Lee Steckline looking for the wraparound and jams it in on Davian. But Anne Renee Davian able to make the save. Downtown St. Paul, the XL Energy Center. We know it's more than 10,000. We don't know how much more as far as official attendance today. We're going to get that later. But a great crowd for this home opener in PWHL Minnesota history. Here's Lagonier for Montreal, number 10. Off for O'Neill. And they'll break out of the zone. Montreal and Minnesota both 1-0 here on the young first season in this great league. Six teams, the original six. And Minnesota's one of them. Lee Sheppers will swing it in. It drifts around to the far side for Cunning. Now skating down, here's Flaherty. Minnesota holding the zone, and they haven't been able to do that very well at times here in the first period as Montreal has been dominant at times. Now Flaherty playing it back for Steckline. Minnesota got a good look heading into that last break. Lee Steckline on the wraparound, the three-time Olympian. They're going to try again here. To George. Back for Kava. Steckline couldn't settle it down. And now Kava again. Michaela Kava, pro hockey veteran. It's it down along the near wall with under four minutes to go in the opening period. Kava got some room, tried to play it up to the point. Minnesota has to recharge back at neutral ice. And there again, the passing not super clean for Minnesota. The puck coming out of the zone and forcing them to start over when they've already struggled to have zone time here tonight. Those passes at the top of the zone need to be clean. Good lead pass for Dalton, but couldn't stay on her skates. Broken up at the line, and now Poulin will get it back to Ambrose. Rink-wide pass. That missed the target. Now Stacy will tip it in deep. Laura Stacy, alternate captain, played her college hockey at Dartmouth. And Minnesota trying to break out. Broken up by Silva. Fed the point for Tabin, and just off her stick. Under three minutes to go here in the first period. And out comes Toppany back the other way. Backhand goes high over the top of the net. Not a great look, but tried to test Davian. Now another chance perhaps for Sumwinkle. She scores! Grace Sumwinkle! Historic goal for Grace Zumwinkle. Did you get chills, Glenn? And this crowd has been waiting for a moment to celebrate like this here tonight. Zumwinkle coming off a 25-goal season at the University of Minnesota. Last season gets the scoring started here at the XL Energy Center on the backhand. Those are tough for goaltenders to read. Davian had some trouble with it there. Zumwinkle makes it a 1-0 game. Have yourselves a day, Minnesota fans. And this is not unlike what we saw Tuesday night in Boston for Minnesota. Under two minutes to go here in the first 20 minutes. In behind Davian, Minnesota trying to create again. Played to Greco here on the near wing side. It's chopped at. Now backhand, centering pass, a drive, and Davian spit it out. I don't know how Davian got in front of that one, but she was ready. Huge save. 
That was Kelly Panic who put it on, and now Davian will muffle the puck here with 1.24 to go in the first session. I mean, you thought that first goal by Minnesota got this crowd rolling and the momentum back in their favor. Can you imagine what a second goal would have done there, Clay? I mean, this this might be the save of the game at this point. We're only in the first period. Just a point-blank look, and Davian comes up big here, tracking the puck well. You can watch how she goes from right to left. She's ready for the play and scrambles back into position. There's a look at Panic on the bench back behind everybody there. Not able to make it a 2 nothing lead for Minnesota. Panic, a former Gopher All-American. Trying to piggyback a goal by a former Gopher in her own right, Grace Zumwinkle. It stays 1-0 now with just over a minute to go. Here's Kava coming in on the near wing. Lost control to Poulin. Last minute of play in this period. Here's Stacy now at center. As Minnesota will take back control. Taylor Heisey been kind of quiet here in the first period. She's got some room to operate now. Oh, she takes a hard hit by Marchman right at the blue line. There's a drive from Fleming that went through the blue paint. 35 seconds to go in the first period. One timer there by Channel, knocked down by Marchman. And Montreal will walk it back out to center. Good first period of action here in St. Paul. Home opener for PWHL Minnesota. Montreal, a great hockey city. Playing so well here in this first period. And nothing to show for it after the first 20 minutes. Alexis, at times, it was all Montreal offensively. But it's 1-0 Minnesota in the franchise's home opener after one. Welcome back. We are standing by now with Kendall Coyne Schofield and Kendall. What a fun first period! You guys really turned it on late there. You got the game, or the game's first goal. How did you feel about your game overall in that first period? Yeah, I think the first 10 minutes we were settling in. I mean, playing in front of this amazing crowd, and uh, you know it was electric. So I think once the nerves settled down, we took a deep breath. A few of those TV timeouts definitely helped us. Uh, and then the last 10, we definitely picked up and played our played our style of hockey. And uh, Grace Emlichel was a tremendous goal. Well, and speaking of settling the nerves, I mean, how did you prepare for a game like today in front of this crowd of 10,000 plus people here at the XL Energy Center? What was that like getting ready and hitting that ice for the first time? It's like waking up on Christmas morning <laughs> as a kid. Um, it is, you didn't really need much to get going. I mean, seeing these kids out here, I know they all hope to be in our skates one day, and that's what we're doing here is inspiring them. But, uh, you know, we've had a phenomenal week. We came off a road trip in Boston, and I think we're all getting a taste of what professional hockey um, is like playing night in and night out, day after day, and really taking care of our bodies uh, to make sure we're performing uh, each day we step on the ice. What a great day for Minnesota sports. Great day for women's sports here in the state of Minnesota for sure. The home opener for BWHL Minnesota leading one to nothing over Montreal. Here we go, period number two. Taylor Heisey in that top line for Minnesota out there. You know, we were talking to Natalie Darwitz before we went on camera for that intermission interview. She said that top line, a little sleepy in that first period, hoping to see a little more from Heisey and company. Heisey, of course, uh, flanked by Krizilva and Coyne Scor Schofield here today. I think Montreal took them by surprise a little bit with how fast they came to play in that first period. Minnesota's passes weren't very clean. It was a little sloppy. We'll see if they made some adjustments in the locker room at intermission. You know, a real tip of the hat to Montreal. That that trap at center ice really stymied Minnesota at times. Now here at center, this is Stacy for Montreal. Swings it ahead for O'Neill. O'Neill with some room moving in. And good job defensively there by Minnesota's Flaherty to knock that away. Yeah, and that chance, she was looking for the perfect play rather than taking the play that was given to her. And because of that, Minnesota closed in on her, was able to take the puck away, and she didn't even get a shot off to begin with. And now an icing. Not quite a minute into this period. Well, this last play by Montreal was looking to be like it might be a really good chance to start this second period, but instead Minnesota defensively comes in on O'Neill here and just closes in on her, steals the puck away, Steckline takes it back behind the net, cleans up the change, and is able to clear it out. Maggie Flaherty, 23 years old, fourth round pick out of the University of Minnesota Duluth. 
Here comes Minnesota from the circle, played in behind the net. Uh, there's a missed centering attempt. It's going to come all the way back down on Matty Rooney. Who again, was challenged quite a bit in the first 20 minutes. Nicole Hensley, the starting netminder at Boston, and was outstanding. You could arguably say the most valuable player in that game the other night. But uh, they go with Rooney today and so far doing a great job. So we're going to get a stoppage here with 18.22 to go. Again, this is going to be something we talk about for years and years to come. And so far, she's showing why she earned the right to be in between the pipes today. And her team hopes she can keep it up the rest of the way through. Play back here at center by Flaherty. Chopped in by Britton Fleming. Cunning. We had a goal the other night on the four check. Montreal takes it away. Here comes Marie-Philippe Poulin. Captain clutch for Team Canada over the years. She lost an edge and slides down to the ice sheet. She wanted a call. She had her arm in the air, but to me it looked like she just lost her footing there. Now back comes Minnesota. Brooke Bryant, former Minnesota State Maverick, lost the puck to David. David swings it around to the far wing side, and Dalton, Dalton lost it in her skates. A battle for it along the wall. Poke free to DeGeorge. Claire DeGeorge, who played at Bemidji State and Ohio State, to swing it back to the near wing side. Sarah LaFleur takes it back for Montreal. Good head pass to Dalton now. Dalton to center, and there was LaFleur coming in on the far wing. And we're going to have our first penalty. Hooking is going to be the call, and right after we had what arguably could have been a missed penalty, now somebody will head to the box, and unfortunately for Minnesota, they're going to be the ones killing a penalty here. Minnesota number nine. Okay, two minutes. And there's the call from the official. Brown doesn't like it, Clay. Uh, Abby Cook. 25-year-old defender out of British Columbia, played her college hockey at BU, takes the hooking penalty at the 3.08 mark here in period number two. <laughs> Here's Poulin now, top of the circle, wrist shot, save made, rebound cleared by Minnesota, and that'll buy some time. Yeah, great work to get that puck up and out of the zone. That's what you got to do on the penalty kill. Force your opponent to go the full length of the ice, take up as much time as you can with them bringing the puck in rather than spending it all in the offensive zone. Marie-Philippe Poulin taking it wide, looking to cut the corner. Has it on her backhand, still with it. Feed it off the wall to the point. Jam back into Poulin's stick, and now she tried to hit Ambrose high in the slot, but missed her. I like what she was thinking there. She was just a step ahead of Ambrose, and the puck out of her reach comes out of the zone, forcing Montreal to start over here. A minute to go in the power play time. First of the game for either team. Under 16 minutes to go, period number two. one nothing Minnesota in their home opener. Now here's Melissa Channel. Glad to be back on the ice after having some sickness this week. Now a chance shorthanded for Minnesota. And now keep in mind, Alexis, this is a unique rule in PWHL play. Minor penalty, you're shorthanded, you score, you spring your player from the box. I love it. I think you've done the work. You've earned your player the right to come out of the box by scoring the shorthanded goal. We've only seen it happen once so far in this week's game. And Minnesota opted to, instead of take that opportunity, peel back and kill some more time on that last chance. Stack line stapled up against the wall by O'Neal. Puck finally comes free and trying to hold the zone. Montreal, they're able to do it. Here's Taven, top of the circle, drive. Rebound comes up. Another shot knocked down. It hit a body. And they scramble for it. Digging it free is Dalton. Another drive goes wide, and Minnesota back at full strength. It was a great initial save by Rudy there. She was way out of her crease to challenge that, that shot. And because of that, she gave herself a good chance there. Now a three on two for Minnesota. Cunnan sent one wide of the left post. Excellent penalty kill for Minnesota. And now trying to generate some offense in their own right. Minnesota back five on five. A big drive right on Damien. They'll stifle the puck. I think Minnesota 
Long done a pretty good job checking that top line of Poulin. I mean, we've not called her name a ton here, leastwise when it comes to scoring chances. Catherine Dawu will hand off to the aforementioned Poulin. She'll feed it to Stacy. Can't settle it down. It's off her tape, and now Minnesota will get it back. Chipped ahead here by Buderak for Minnesota. And now a player goes down. Fans wail. No penalty call. Ambrose tried to settle it down. She'll have to go back for it as both teams make line changes here. Under 13 minutes to go in the second. Lee Steckline tried to clear it out. Almost turned over right out in front of the Minnesota K. And now Zumwingle with some room. Tried to go forehand, coming off her backhand and lost it. Kept alive by Minnesota. They throw it to the front, knocked down. And out of the stick of Katie Tabin, former star at Quinnipiac. Lee Steckline again. Steckline, 30 years old. The lion's share of the players, under 30. Trying to jam it inside of the net. Davian there to smother. As you look at Maddie Rooney, who got the start today in his first home opener in franchise history. And she's done a great job. One of the uh, many Olympians on the ice today. Absolutely. And we talked about it before, too, but a Minnesota native. Uh, raised in Andover, played at the University of Minnesota Duluth, so she's very familiar with this town, with this state, and I'm sure she's excited to be between the pipes tonight. She's had a fantastic performance so far. Definitely kept Minnesota in it early when they were not playing their best hockey. She stopped all 12 shots she has seen today. Face off at the Montreal end, played back to the Minnesota line as Minnesota will chip it in deep. Cunning trying to race for the puck. Laskova beat her there. La Dominica Laskova. Played for the Czechs at the Beijing Olympics. Bujo tried to advance the puck, lost it between her skates, but Montreal still has possession. Up to the Minnesota line, there's the centering pass for Dempsey out of her reach. And now Minnesota will break it back the other way. Here's Taylor Heisey with some room. Look out, here comes Taylor Heisey. She'll send it up off the glass. That's what the fans came here to see. Taylor Heise getting loose. That puck came off her stick hot and tight. And Davian, good job to tie up that short side so she couldn't get a better look there. Lake City, Minnesota, formerly a, a basketball town, and that was until Taylor Heise came along. That's where Randy Brewer, former Minnesota Gopher basketball player, grew up. But now everybody knows it is Taylor <laughs> Heise's playground. Under 11 minutes to go here in the second. Silva lost it. There's a drive from Flaherty. That's off a skate to the far wing side, and Stacy will get it out for Montreal. Now here's Van Silva at center. Coming in. Throws it back to the middle. Nobody home on the right wing for Montreal. Van Silva again swings it back into the Minnesota zone. Turned over. Taven takes it back. Taven out of Winnipeg. Not all that far from where we are today. Swings in behind. Off to the far wing side. Kept in deep by Greco. It's a good four check now by Minnesota. Kelly Panic comes over to play it. Tries to turn it toward the front. She is driven down. No penalty called. As we're past the halfway mark of this hockey game. Taven now back. She'll just flip it in deep. Comes off the end boards to the stick of Claire Dalton. She couldn't spin it on net. Was a good look, but not able to get the shot off. Rooney looked like she was ready for it as well, but Dalton almost a chance there for Montreal. We are standing by now with Coach Klee over on the Minnesota bench. And Coach, to start that first period, your team was kind of stuck in their own end for a lot of it, but they found a way to get the game's first goal and have played much better since. What did you see out of them to start the game here on home ice? Yeah, I mean, you nailed it, right? I mean, uh, you know, there's... You know, I don't know how many, 14, 15,000 people it looks like to me. Uh, it's the first time for a lot of them to ever get this kind of crowd, this environment. It's awesome. I'm so excited for them, but they were nervous. So we definitely were nervous. We finally settled in. And Mark, I thought we played better. Started making some hockey plays, and then obviously capped a lot of chances since. So uh, I definitely have liked our response since then. Appreciate your time, Coach. Good luck the rest of the way. You bet. Montreal going on the power play 
for the second time, still looking for their first power play goal of the year. Here's Marchman, off to Poulin, Poulin wrist shot, hit a body. Caroms over to the near wing side. And they sort of back on the penalty kill, had an effective kill, thanks in large part to a couple of nice saves by Rooney, forced to come out and cut off the angle there again. And now here's Heisey trying to get it out of the zone for Minnesota, and she's able to muscle it out. Well, we talk about Heisey for her offensive talents, but look at how she plays defensively as well, forcing that puck out of the zone on the penalty kill to give Minnesota a bit of a breather there. Here's Vanna Silva for Montreal. And at 15 to go. The power play time for Montreal, their second of the game. Denisa Laskova now. Laskova holds it, gets a shot on, the rebound chopped at, but Rooney saw it the entire way. Power play number two for Montreal, still over a minute to go. In the advantage, taken by Minnesota here, and again, if they aren't able to score shorthanded, that would spring Kava from the box. That's an interesting little wrinkle here in the PWHL that I think fans are going to like. Forces uh, teams to maybe be a little more offensive on the kill. Exactly. You might see teams challenging more at that blue line instead of dumping it in, maybe taking the chance to try to get a shot on net. So it'll make things interesting for special teams this year. I should say forces encourages yeah. would be the <laughs> operative word. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Montreal really hasn't found any traction on this advantage. Dump it in. Chase it to the corner. Minnesota has a couple of players there trying to dig it free. And a valuable time ticket away here for Montreal. 12 seconds to go in the power play. Still bottled up along the wall. Now dug free by Van Silva, but there's Flaherty. Such a great defender. Laps it to the other side of the ice. And Minnesota's back at full strength. Kava out of the box and back into the play. Two really good kills for Minnesota today. Well, and they need it. They're only up a goal right now. Montreal has controlled large chunks of this game, especially early. Minnesota needs to find a way to keep them on their toes if they want to hang around in the lead here. Minnesota got it to the line, but not out. Now here's Steckline who will take a try. And now on the stick of Kendall Coyne. Here comes Coyne, a shot, and a save by Anne Renee Davian. That's why Davian's one of the top goaltenders in the world. Never panics. And she looked behind her, too, because she thought it snuck behind her. It did. Here comes Kendall again. Another drive. And Davian again equal to the task. And now some pushing and shoving to the right of Davian. And the official's quick to get in there and separate. Well, I kind of mentioned it earlier. We might see some frustration start to rise for Montreal. They've played large chunks of this game really, really well and have not been able to find the back of the net. And a look here at the last chance by Minnesota. And the save made by Davian. The puck kind of popped to her right. Got it cleared out of the crease by her teammates. She's been good tonight as well. Ten saves on 11 shots. She hasn't been tested all that much here today, but Minnesota's made it tough on her when she has been tested. Kendall Coyne Schofield, a couple of scoring chances on that last flurry for Minnesota be a real poignant if she was able to pop one in today. The Minnesota captain, of course, such an instrumental part of getting this league started. He's one of the players who really spearheaded the effort to get us to this point. Well, I'm glad she did, because I'm glad to be here today. I know the fans are glad to be here, and we're getting treated to a real good matchup here this afternoon. Here comes Gavid, trying to get a shot off. That was muffled, and now it comes to the stick of Heisey. Heisey. On her back end, trying to cut the corner and ridden to the outside beautifully by Katie Taven. Yeah, really good job defensively to break up a chance for one of Minnesota's best. Now Poulin. Poulin tries to center for Stacy. Poulin driven to the outside. Poulin still with it. Marie Philippe Poulin. A hockey hero in Canada. Has spoiled so many. United States dreams over the years. This one chopped to the corner. Zumwinkle comes up with it. She's got the lone goal in the hockey game. Flaherty tried to flip it toward the front. Now Poulin's got it. Back comes Montreal. This is Stacy. Tries to center. Late was Bougeau getting there. And not a bad job on the back check by Minnesota as well. 
Now here comes Kelly Panic for Minnesota. Panic trying to work around Wagonier. Wagonier did a nice job holding her ground. Coming up on the 15 minute mark of period number two. One nothing Minnesota. It's Poulin again. Over for Bougeau. Supporting the puck is Lagonier. Now with some speed hits the blue line and is poked off Erskine. I think Minnesota's done a better job this period clogging up that neutral zone, Alexis. They really have, and they're doing it cleanly. They're not looking panicked the minute that Montreal comes into the zone with the puck. They're staying in their spots. They're getting in the lanes. They're breaking the plays up, and just like this, they're working to carry it out of the zone and forcing Montreal to evacuate. Steckline flips it down. Everyone looking for icing, and there it is. Welcome back in. Minnesota up 1-0, but about to kill their third penalty of the night. Sophia Cunnan just getting her arm wrapped around there for the takedown. She's going to sit in the box for two. She had a goal on Wednesday in Boston, now getting her first penalty minutes of the season. And play. Minnesota's got to be careful here because they are giving Montreal a chance to get back into this game. When a game is tight like this, 1-0. The two things that make a big difference, turnovers and special teams. And Minnesota is making a case here for special teams to maybe be the difference maker in tonight's game if Montreal finds a way back into the game here. Minnesota took four penalties on Wednesday night in Boston. They're able to kill three of them. This is the third time they've been shorthanded today. Here's Stacy, fanned on a shot, broken up. Now diving is Stacy trying to get another attempt on that. Playing from her knees, got it to the corner. Anna Silva trying to feed it back for Stacy. Here's Poulin now in to support the puck. Montreal on the power play. One timer, big drive, knocked down, rebound, steered away by Rooney. That was a blast from the point by Ambrose. Side of the net, there's Maureen Murphy, former star at Northeastern. Here's Murphy again. Try to flip it out in front, knocked away, back to the corner. A minute 10 to go in this power play. Ambrose, there's a one-timer, Poulin. And Rooney somehow saw it, gets the whistle. I'll tell you what, Clay, Rooney's job has not been easy today. So many of Montreal's chances in this game have been scrambled, chaotic plays in front of the net, on the side of the net, in the crease. And another look at this last save by Rooney. I mean, she has had to be all over the place here today. And Montreal's got to be getting frustrated with her that she has not let one slip behind her yet today. Ambrose, Ambrose, I should say, looking for a drive lane. Couldn't get it on. Now here's Stacy again from the corner. 45 seconds to go in the power play. Ambrose again moving in. Beats it down for Murphy. Murphy, shallow angle shot, snared by Rooney. Rooney's angles have just been so good tonight as well because Montreal set up the puck well tonight where they've gotten some good looks from good scoring areas. And Maddie Rooney has just done a good job of making sure that there's no open space for them to shoot at, whether it's tying up the post short side or coming out high on the crease to make sure they have less net to shoot at. She's done a really, really good job here today. And just shadowing what Hensley did on Wednesday night. If this is what we're going to see all season from Minnesota, <laughs> I think they're in good hands. Yeah, you read my mind. <laughs> Still over a half minute to go in the power play. There's a break for Minnesota. Going to buy some time as Taven has to retreat. Mascova will leave it back for Taven. Taven had an assist in the season opening win for Montreal the other night. Tried to assist here. It was tipped just wide. It's Claire Dalton. And Dalton battling for it in the corner. O'Neill is able to work it free for Montreal. Back to the point. Thrown out in front. And that whistle just passed Rooney in Minnesota. Another effective penalty kill back to full strength. And Montreal spent a lot of time in the zone there, but Minnesota doing a good job of making sure that puck stays out of the net. Back to five on five. And it's going to be icing to the face up back of the Minnesota zone. Well, Minnesota's escaped trouble three times here so far. Having to kill some penalties, still just a 1-0 game, and it feels like this game is flying by already under two minutes to go here in the second period. Minnesota's got to stay out of the box the rest of the way through. If he 
because Montreal at some point will start to capitalize yeah. if they keep marching to the box. They have too many good goal scorers, specifically that Poulan line. Yeah. With Stacy and Banner Silva. I mean, they're just dangerous. And here is Poulan. Steps in over the line, tries to feed it for Stacy. Stacy will track it into the corner. A minute and a half to go in this second period. Alongside Alexis Pearson on Clay Mantic. So glad you're with us here on this historic home opener. PWHL Minnesota's first game here in St. Paul. The fans have shown up. And Minnesota has a 1 0 lead. It's the number one overall pick in the September draft. Taylor Heisey gets it off for Kendall Coyne Schofield. We'll come back to the near wing side as we go under a minute. Bookbinder. Trying to center, played in behind O'Neal, wrapping up her player. 50 seconds to go in the second. Now Kaba trying to work it free, but Montreal takes it away. And they'll work it back to neutral ice, bouncing puck, got it to the Minnesota line. Now a two-on-one if they hurry. Murphy holds, oh, what patience! Shot, rebound, got another drive on. Maureen Murphy. That's what she did at Northeastern so well, but still can't solve Rooney. I don't know who was more patient, Murphy or Rooney, on that sequence. And Montreal coming very close to tying this game in the final minute of play in the second period. Now attacking again, LaFleur got it ahead for Dalton, taken back by Minnesota. Final seconds here of the second period. As Montreal had a great couple of chances there by Murphy in the waning minute. The crowd here chanting Minnesota, obviously understanding that that last sequence came close to making it a tied game, but urging on the home crowd. Some differences from the NHL to take note of. Three points for a regulation win. Two points for overtime or a shootout win. One point for an overtime loss and zip for a regulation loss. That's different from the NHL. Obviously, it increases the value of winning in regulation. This game is nip and tuck right now going to the third. It really does, and especially for a game like this where it is just one nothing. this is going to be potentially a game where if this does go into overtime, these two teams might look back on this game later in the season yeah. and say, man, we had a chance here to win this one in regulation. So I really like that element that the PWHL has added to the scoring system this year and the fact that, like you said, it matters to get those wins in regulation. This is a tight one, and Minnesota's going to want to try to hang on here and get all three of those points here tonight. And it's just a 24-game schedule. It's going to get longer next year, but this year it's just 24 games. Every game so important as we're underway here in period number three. The only goal coming back in the first, late in the first period, from Zumwinkel as Krizova cruises in, couldn't settle the puck down to get a backhand on net. Minnesota coming close to adding to their lead here early in the third period. This game has one of those next goal wins type feels. If Montreal can get a goal, it feels like they might be able to come out on top. But if Minnesota can get goal number two and extend this to a 2-0 game, man, Montreal, they are going to be reeling after that. Brzeova doing a great job trying to stay with that puck and does, gets it to the point. Penalty box is empty here to start period number three. This is Flaherty moving in. Got a shot knocked down by Taven. Off in the corner, Poulan tried to clear and does for Stacy, and she'll skate it ahead. And now dumping it in, Montreal, they're going to make a full change here just a minute in to the third period. Alongside Alexis Pearson, I'm Clay Mathic. So glad you're with us on this opening day of PWHL hockey in St. Paul, Minnesota for the Minnesota franchise. So many people helped get this league to this point, but especially here in Minnesota. Obviously, this is the state of hockey in North America. There's no bigger hockey hotbed than Minnesota, and especially the Twin Cities. You put a hockey team on the ice, and Minnesota fans will come out and watch. And you're seeing that here today at the XL Energy Center. So much anticipation for this afternoon's matchup here in St. Paul. And they're getting treated to a good one so far with the home team in the lead. Grace Zumwinkel from the University of Minnesota holding high in the slot. Tipped, and they score! Minnesota now with a 2-0 lead. They haven't always had 
the most chances in this game or the most pressure, but they have been the team that has capitalized when the chances has co have come. And you take another look at this as well. The shot from the point and the tip out front, and Liz Shepherds gets the job done. Played for the Minnesota Whitecaps last year in the PHF, comes in here in Minnesota in the PWHL and making her presence known here in game number two on the season for Minnesota. Montreal penalty, number eight, Gabrielle Dobbin. Two minutes flashing. First power play for Minnesota. They were 0 for 1 on Wednesday night in Boston. So just the second power play of the year for Minnesota. Here comes Montreal back short-handed. That was O'Neill who tried to feed it ahead. Laura Stacy, but out of her reach. And this is going to be a huge penalty kill for Montreal. It's unfortunate for Montreal that they've only taken one penalty so far, and it's going to prove to be a big one, but they're going to have to find a way to keep this a two-goal game down the stretch here. The beat in the box for slashing. That's cleared by Taven. She is maybe their steadiest defender and got it all the way down to buy some time on this kill. Now turned over. And now Poulin with a drive, knocked down in front by Natalie Bookbinder. As Minnesota tries to get up ice here on this power play that it has already seen a minute expire. Minnesota content to hold the puck back behind the net here. Kill as many seconds off that. And first penalty of the game for Montreal. They took six in their season opener. They really cooled it off here today. And now they've got a big kill. Still 38 seconds to go in this power play. Kelly Panic moving it. Drops it down low. Zumwinkle trying to get another one. Nearly had the hat trick. I mean, a third goal here would feel like the nail in the coffin. In Minnesota, they don't need to rush it. They don't need to force it. They've got the two-goal lead, but a third goal would be really sweet here for the home team if they could get it. Panic again. Here's Lee Steckline now with some patience. Grace Sumwinkle, blistering shot off the end boards. I'll tell you what, she's, she's going for that hat trick here tonight on home ice for this Minnesota team. Still dangerous on the power play that has expired David out of the box. And Minnesota comes up empty, but not for lack of trying. Zumwinkle has been dynamite here tonight. She's got it again. Spins in the corner. Feeds it to Steckline. A drive that whistles wide of that right post. That was a big kill, as you alluded to, Alexis. They had to have it. Montreal got it done. There's a lot of time left in this game, but if they would have allowed a third goal here with the way this game has been going, the chances they've had not being able to capitalize, that would have been a back-breaking goal. So well done by Montreal on the road to get the penalty kill here and keep this just a two-goal game. And keep in mind, Montreal fell behind twice on Tuesday before winning in overtime. This is a scrappy bunch at Davian. Despite giving up another goal, has been really good in net. As we look again at that goal by Zumwinkle. So it initially looked like it was going to be Shepherds credited with the goal, but they're saying Zumwinkle sent this one in untouched from the point, just ripped it home. And yeah, I think that's the right call. I mean, it bounces, but it actually bounces off the ice, not off the stick of Shepherds out front. So job well done by the crew to notice that. And give the goal to Zumwinkle, who has two goals tonight and three goals on the season in just two games. Put down in front. Taken back momentarily by DeGeorge, but lost it off her stick. And DeGeorge is able to regroup, comes through neutral ice. Got to the Montreal line, still chopping at it. That turns it over to Vanna Silva. Boy, Montreal needs something early. Uh, they can't wait too long. They need something now. Well, with the way Maddie Rooney's been playing, they can't guarantee the goals are going to come easily. She's made some really, really good saves here this afternoon, some tough saves, and they're sitting scoreless on the afternoon so far. They're going to have to start finding ways to get some creative shots in on that and make Rooney's job even tougher here down the stretch. Here's Leah Lum to start it up ice. Former UConn Husky member of the Chinese Olympic team. And Minnesota keeps that puck in deep. Trying to throw it out in front. That was Kendall Coyne Schofield. Had it picked off. Maureen Murphy from the checkered red line will dump it in. Six minutes into period number three. 2-0 Minnesota now. And a couple of goals by Zumwinkle. 
Now with some room, here's Krasilva. Denisa Krasilva, good centering pass. Just off the stick of Heisey, and Heisey is going to be held up. Another Montreal penalty. The official thought about that for a second before they put their arm in the air, and I think this is the right call here. 13,316 fans in attendance in St. Paul here today. State of Hockey, way to show up today, way to show out, way to put on your purple gear, get in the rink and cheer on these two teams here today in what's going to be a historic season in women's hockey and hockey in general. I'm so proud of this state and, and what this league has done as well. People are showing up all over North America for this. Fans all week, months leading up to the season. This has been something that has been hyped up and prepared for, and the week has finally arrived, and it's better than expected. 2-0 Minnesota, 13.35 to go, third period. Bujo muscles it to the Minnesota line. She's bumped off the puck as Montreal desperately needs to get the next one. Step line will skate it to center. Plays it off on the right wing. Centering pass for Tapani. And again, Davian able to keep it out. She has been really good. And Renee Davian. Uh, she's down a couple of goals, but not because of anything really she has done. Absolutely not. I mean, the skaters in front of her have to find a way to generate some more chances here. And Renee Davian, one of four goaltenders to win the Patty Kazmaier Award, top award in collegiate hockey. She did that at Wisconsin. A lot of people in this area know her. Moving in, Krasova whistled one low and wide in the Montreal Nets. And Minnesota can't hold the zone. Now a race for the puck. Stacy's got wheels. Takes it away from Bookbinder. Stacy now trying to free beat the middle, but taken away by Kendall Coyne Schofield, who is probably the fastest player on the ice today. Probably is an understatement. She has got some wheels. Minnesota's going to love to have that speed all season long. She was fun to talk to before the game today. Uh, Lost her voice somewhere <laughs> in Boston, she said. She had left it back in Beantown after that win the other night. Here's a chance now, moving in, trying to feed it. Right out in front of the Montreal net, but broke it up and back out to center. The back door was gaping open, but there was just too many Montreal skaters in that passing lane to complete the pass. There's Kendall Coyne Schofield had that shot toward the net, neutralized by Lagonier. Did a good job just kind of muscling her up. Now a drive. Save Davian. And nobody there on the near wing for Montreal. As they're going to chip it all the way back down, bouncing puck. That's going to be an icing call with 11.41 to go here in St. Paul. Abby Cook, 24 year old defender, back for Minnesota. Gets it across to Greco. Greco will dump it in. Minnesota holding on to a 2 0 lead right now. Both these teams trying to go to 2-0. and And we haven't had a home team win a game yet in the PWHL. Sort of getting very close to doing just that. Chipped. There's Cunning with some room. Cunning got a shot off and a kick save there by Davian. Great patience to wait out the defender and get the shot in on that. Battle for it along the wall in the corner. Poke there by O'Neill. Works it free for Murphy. Now Murphy quickly hemmed in. Johnson puck came to Vanna Silva's stick. Now Vanna Silva with some speed on her backhand. Fights through the check of Flaherty. Vanna Silva to the middle. Holds. Got a shot toward the net, but it was knocked down and cleared by Lee Steckline. And that's what Steckline does. She is so steady on the back end. Yeah, truly an at-home defender. Really does a good job of locking things down, not giving a lot of space to, for the opponent to work with, and does a great job of it again there. Now the 13,000-plus are doing the wave here in St. Paul. Kava to the middle. Drops it back for DeGeorge. Out of her reach, and I think she lost it in her skates a bit. Yeah, the drop pass there to DeGeorge just didn't work. I think Kava should have just shot that there instead. See if they can get a rebound if the puck doesn't go in the net, but DeGeorge not able to gather that one up. Minnesota keeping Montreal hemmed in in their own end. Taven clears it to the line on a backhand. Channel will pick it up there. There's Melissa Channel up ahead for Tapani, who will dump it in on an angle. As we're past the halfway point of the third period. 
Sarah LaFleur. Had a couple of scoring chances early in this hockey game. Has been pretty much neutralized since. Minnesota again feeds it in deep. And a line change for Minnesota with 9.20 to go. Montreal has continued to get chances throughout this game despite that first period being some of their best opportunities. But what Minnesota has done is found a way to neutralize some of those chances so they aren't looking as a great A of chances as they were in previous periods. And some too, uh, Montreal has yet to record a shot on net here in the third. You know, they've carried the play the lion's share of the game here today. Minnesota out shooting Montreal 5 0 in the third. Heisey knocked off the puck. That shot there by Dalton knocked down. And now here comes Minnesota. Denisa Krizova. Krizova trying to get around the defender. Leah Long knocking her down. And that's going to be a penalty. You know, they've, uh, they've got themselves in a two goal hole. They absolutely have to kill this penalty. Yeah, roughing the call on the ice there on the penalty for Lawman. You said it. Montreal has to get out of this penalty kill without giving up another goal with just eight and a half minutes to go and a two goal lead for Minnesota. It's do or die time now for the road team. Minnesota hasn't scored a power play goal yet this season. They are 0 for 3 on the year, 0 for 2 today. Just a couple of shots on net with the advantage. See what they can do here. They turn it over and not to a good player in their defense as Poulin got a backhand on shorthanded. I mean, that's the last player you want to turn it over to. Well, and if Montreal could score a shorthanded goal here, you get the double whammy, you get the goal, and you get your skater out of the box. You don't have to kill so much penalty here late in this game. And you know Marie-Philippe Poulin, who has three gold medal game winners, would like to get her first goal of the season. She had an assist the other night, but yet to score in PWHL play. Now Minnesota getting frisky here. Oh, another player goes down. Crowd woos, and are they going to get a call? No, they will not. 45 seconds to go in this advantage for Minnesota, leading 2-0. There's Heisey taking a check. Puck comes loose. And now another penalty call. And now Minnesota's going to have a two-player advantage for a half minute. Two minutes Minnesota, on two players here for 20 seconds yet. Bookbinder, she's the quarterback. Here's Bookbinder. Natalie Bookbinder, hands off. One-timer Bookbinder, and it's kicked out of there by Davian. Great job by Davian to get the right pad out there and keep it out of harm's way. Brzeova, Bookbinder. Again, a one-time all hit her own player. Friendly fire, and that staggered her teammate. And she's hurting. Player out of the box. Heisey a drive. Davian scrambles to cover up. Minnesota still on the power play for a minute 24, but man, you, you hate to see this happen when you, you hit your own player trying to score. Well, great puck movement here on the power play, but Coyne Schofield inadvertently blocking her own player's shot. And here's a look at the blast from Heisey. Davian has to jump on that rebound. Good job to bring up the whistle there after some pressure by Minnesota on the power play. Minute 20 to go in the advantage for Minnesota. Kristen O'Neill in the box for Montreal. 6.20 to go. The goal here for Minnesota would probably be the haymaker. Top and E. Tied up. And Montreal able to clear it under a minute to go in the advantage. And the nice thing for Minnesota here is at this point, even if you don't get a power play goal, you've killed a few more minutes off the clock to avoid Montreal having more time to pull the goaltender, get some looks on the other side of the ice. Flaherty flips it across, tipped by David. She jumps in on the puck and will skate it back to center. Heads it up to Dalton. Dalton. Short-handed, forcing Rooney to make a kick save. Off the toe, Rooney had to stretch out for that one. And Montreal coming close there to getting the coveted short-handed goal here in the PWHL. Minnesota just happy to dump it in deep. No real pressure here with 20 seconds to go. Get some fresh power play skaters out on the ice. As Prusova goes back, 10 seconds to go on the power play. 
Channel feeds it ahead for Krasilva. Denisa Krasilva has some room going right to the front. Loose puck in the circle. Shot saved, rebound cleared, and Montreal back to full strength. Montreal catching a break there. They had a player without a stick. And it was not an easy sequence for Montreal. That was Ambrose who lost her stick on the sequence, but they were able to come away unscathed. Here's Krasova driving to the net here. Great work to get into the crease. Couple bodies hit the deck. Minnesota gets another look at it after that, but maybe it Keeping this just a two-goal game, giving her team a chance, Clay, to get back into this one. It is crunch time for Montreal for sure. Still five minutes left. That's a lifetime, it really is. <laughs> that might as well be 12 hours in hockey terminology. Look back to the far wing side. Julian Dempsey got it out for Montreal, but pounced on again by Minnesota. Trying to win an historic home opener in PWHL franchise history. First game in the Twin Cities. It's going to drift back down. No icing. And for Minnesota, the rest of the way through, this is going to be simple hockey and short shifts is going to be the name of the game. Get the bodies on, get the bodies off, and keep it simple here down the final five minutes of play. Fleming had it on her stick momentarily for Minnesota. Taken away. Here's Poulin trying to feed the front. She is tied up. Puck comes free. Minnesota back the other way through center with just over four minutes to go. Cut it. Had a goal on Wednesday night in Boston. Montreal gets it back to neutral ice. They've got to hurry. Murphy, long drive, and it's ramped up off the stick into the protective mesh with 3.51 to go. Trying to hang on here with under four minutes to go. <laughs> Trying to set up with an empty net behind him. Poulin swings it across for Ambrose. Now here, Stacy overskated the puck. Loose in behind Rooney, who has been dynamite, looking for the shutout. Empty net, look out! Off the post! No icing. When there's no goalie in net, are the posts still the goalie's best friends? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Under three minutes to play. Here we go, bingo! Gray Sumwinkle. And the good times keep rolling here for the home crowd at the XL Energy Center. The hats are on the ice. Sumwinkle now. Four goals, two games. Unbelievable what she's been able to do here. And the start of the season here of the PWHL seals the deal here for Minnesota on home ice. And they took a couple shots at that empty net, but I guess it's only fitting Zumwinkle's the one who finds the back of it, right? Take another look at it here. We take a look at her on the bench. She's put in the work here tonight. Zumwinkle gets it at the defensive blue line, and I mean, right down the middle. Couldn't have had a better shot. And Montreal not really able to get the zone set up there with the bold goaltender. Minnesota cleared a couple times, hit the post once, and Zumwinkle right down the middle makes it a 3 nothing game. Well, there it is, first hat trick in PWHL history. League only a, a, a week old, but hey, the firsts keep on coming. And on this home opening day in Minnesota, it's a Minnesota native in Grace Zumwinkle. Getting all of the offense for Team Minnesota. It's been a week of first here in the PWHL, and it has been so fun to see how each of these games unfold, how the crowds show up and cheer on these teams to see which players rise above and are able to score goals and make big moments happen for their teams. And Grace Dunwinkle, not only one of the best on Minnesota, but right now one of the best in the league.
Step right and panic on the assists. And don't think for a minute they didn't try to set up someone go for that third one. I wouldn't have doubted it for a second. Oh, big collision at center ice. Last Scova throwing her body around. And Kendall Coyne Schofield taking the brunt of it. She's had a tough third period. She's already lost her voice. She's going to have a few bruises after today's game as well. Two minutes to go. What a day. Here in the state of hockey, what a day for this league, what a day for women's sports in general. A league that is backed by some great people. Mark Walter, the owner of the Dodgers. Stan Kasten, who we saw before the game, and he was just beaming, so <laughs> proud of what this league has become in such a short time. Fabian trying to keep it out. Jumped out here by Bujo. Can't control it. Under a minute and a half to go. Minnesota with Kava on her backhand going right to the blue paint. Couldn't get a shot on. Great work to get to the front of the net, but couldn't pull the trigger on the forehand. Montreal able to carry it out of the zone. Last minute of the play in this period. Minnesota has been outshot in this hockey game. And through the first two periods, Montreal really was the more dominant team. But Minnesota is going to walk out of St. Paul with its first home victory. They were outshot on Wednesday, too. They got the job done then and here again today. Kava right into the club of Davian with 30 seconds to go. Crowd on their feet. They are ready to celebrate when this final buzzer sounds. And like you said, what a fun day it's been. You, you listed, you know, what a day for this, what a day for that. I'm going to add one more to your list. What a day for sports, period. No doubt. What a week for sports. Well it has been so much fun to be a part of all of this. Billie Jean King, instrumental in getting this league going. Canadian hockey legend Jana Heffert is the league's senior vice president of hockey operations doing so much to get this thing pointed in the right direction before the opening puck drop. Brian Burke, a longtime NHL executive, has been involved. Final seconds here in St. Paul. Minnesota out to a 2-0 start. It's a shutout for Minnesota native Maddie Rooney. And a hat trick for another Minnesota native, former Gopher Grace Sumwinkle. All smiles as it's a 3-0 Minnesota win.